Hey friends all over the world, Dr. Keenan here. A recent article suggests, it was in Forbes magazine, that suggests that 7.6 million, or somewhere 7.3 million Christians have opted for church apps over actually coming into the physical building. Seven million Christians, people that profess Christianity, have opted for church apps instead of actually going into the physical edifice. Now, we know that the pandemic has played a role in this. In fact, Barna did a study at the beginning of the pandemic in 2020. They showed that online church attendance had surpassed records. I mean, it had gone beyond anything that we've ever seen. It's, it's online church attendance skyrocketed because of the pandemic, because people could not physically go into buildings anymore. But here's the question. After about three months into the pandemic, the online church attendance went down significantly. And even uh, in 2021, when when churches reopened and people could go back into the building, people stopped going back. Many people never went back. And the question is why? I told you before, I did a video a little while ago talking about the New World Order and talk about how we will never go back to normal again. Church, as usual, will never be seen again. Church will never go back to its usual because church as usual pre-pandemic was never God's original design. What we were doing before was never what God instructed us to do. And I believe that the church was extremely comfortable. I believe that the church was extremely complacent. All right? In fact, the reality is that the church was never a building to begin with. This may make some people upset. The church was not the edifice. The church was actually and is actually the gathering. The gathering, the ecclesia, the gathering. It is the gathering It is the actual gathering that makes it the church. Whether we gather in a football field, whether we gather in, gather in a stadium, whether we gather in a physical church building with a steeple, the church, what makes us the church, is the ecclesia or the gathering of the saints. Jesus said in Matthew 18, where two or more of you shall gather in my name, there I am in the midst of you, and whatever you shall ask, it shall be done. So, so there is something profound that is happening. Now what we're seeing is that the church is now being intimidated by the power structures that be from gathering at all. That's why you're going to see. Now, now I told you this is interesting. I went to the the theme park the other day, it was packed in the thousands. I'm not even joking. Without any exaggeration, we couldn't even find a parking space. The queue to get into, not to buy tickets, to actually, if you already had tickets, to get in the park was in the hundreds. And yet we have pastors that are saying, well, we're not going to have New Year's service. We're not going to do any of that because we're concerned with your safety. Now, what is happening? What is happening? God is actually calling us higher. God is calling the church higher. And if when you when things begin to get more challenging, Anywhere there's a challenge, there's a change. Catch what I said. Anywhere there's a challenge, there's a change. When God allows a challenge to the church, he is, he is calling the church into a change. 
He wants us to change our dynamic. He wants us to embrace who we are authentically created and called to be. And the challenge always precedes the change. Are you listening to me? Let me turn this up just a little bit. Trying to cool. My phone's kind of getting hot. So I won't be on here long because the phone's heating up. Anytime God allows a challenge is because he is provoking a change. Whatever won't challenge you won't change you. Now, this is not every church. Many churches are still gathering like mine. We never stopped. But there's something to be said. God is actually calling believers into a deeper encounter with his spirit, with who he is, and with, with who he has created us to be. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So here it is. God is calling his church into these three things that I've been talking about. Radical faith, radical obedience, and radical giving. I've been talking about it for the last several months. I will continue to talk about it because the Lord has spoken to me and shown me that this is actually the way forward. There is no Christianity that you will practice in the days ahead that will not require you to sacrifice your time, talent, and treasures. There is no Christianity that you will practice in the days ahead that will not require you to operate in bold faith and to rely on the supernatural power of God. The problem is that we've given people coffee and smoke machines, but we didn't give them the God of the Bible. We didn't teach them about the power of God. We didn't teach them that the scriptures point to a God who is supernatural. A God who healed the sick, who raised the dead, who cast out demons, who cleansed the lepers. This is Christianity. And the Christianity of sitting in a pew, listening to a great motivational speech is over. It will never come again. Those days have come to an end. And so we must change. We must be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So friends, I'm telling you, this is a phenomenal opportunity for the body of Christ. When all hell seems to be breaking loose, we have a profound opportunity in front of us and that is to truly be the church. Because the church is the pillar and ground of the truth. We are the examples of what heaven is supposed to look like. Heaven doesn't look like fear. Heaven doesn't look like anxiety. Heaven doesn't look like depression. Heaven doesn't look like, you know, hopelessness. And so where there are environments of hopelessness, people don't want to go anymore. People are tired of this. People are tired of hearing about a Jesus that can help you balance your checkbook but can't heal your body. People don't want to hear that anymore. People are tired of it. People want to know about the supernatural power of God. People are tired of seeing a God that cannot affect change in their lives and in the lives of their family members. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God has allowed this challenge to provoke a change for us to actually be the church. So let me, let me ask you something real quick before you go because I want you to do something. I want you to do something. As we come to the end of the year, we are closing out this year strong. We have just a couple more days in 2021. And I want to challenge you. I did it earlier. I'm going to do it again. I want to challenge you. In fact, what I'm going to do for everyone who responds to this challenge, we're going to send you a resource. And that's the Healing Handbook. Because I believe that as we go into this, and I'm going to do another video later today, as we go into this season, the healing power of God has to be provoked again. 
We have to lean on the power of God for physical and emotional healing like never before. So with that being said, I want you to respond and I want you to partner with us and I want you to sow right now. In fact, again, a lot of you are saying, Pastor, I want to sow. You've been asking me, oh, Pastor, I want to sow into your ministry and blah, 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 blah. Okay, you've been asking, so we're going we're gonna to answer you. Okay? So I'm putting the link here now, and I want you to give radically. Yes, I'm asking you. I want you to give radically. I want you to give generously. And I want you to give in faith. Now, here's what we're going to do. Did I even post it? I thought I did. Let me do it again. Did y'all get the post that I just posted? Okay. Maybe I did. Let me try it again. You know, Facebook's been giving me quite the time lately. <laughs> it's quite the time lately. All right. So, now watch this. I want you to see this. Let me see if it works this time. All right. There it is. Okay. All right, let me keep talking. So, I, all right, I pinned it. Here it is. Um, if you if you're giving via PO box, you can go uh, Keenan Bridges Ministries PO box one five nine Ruskin Florida three three five seven five. If you're giving on my website. Go to the website, I have the link there, or just go to KeenanBridges.com. If you don't have anything to give, write me, and I might just send you something. I might just send you a book for free. The point is, I want to partner, I want you to partner with us to see this great harvest of soul. I want you to partner with us to see a great harvest of souls. Right now, I want you to respond. Bro, who, Stacey, what are you talking about? I don't know who that person is. Please, in Jesus' name. I want you to partner with us to see a great harvest. This is your opportunity. And I want to see if we can give the enemy a black eye right now. Okay? I love you. Go to my website. You may say, hey, I want to give a dollar. I'll challenge you. At least a dollar. Two dollars. Whatever you want to give. I don't know. I don't really, it's not really up to me. You might want to give a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars. Whatever you God tells you to do. Whatever God tells you to do, I want you to respond. Okay? All right. I love you, friends. My link is below. Remember, Jesus is Lord. Bye-bye.